Business Life Today. My name is Emmanuel Abuaji Riafe. Now to our very first story. Ghana's only organic cocoa buying company, Yaira Glover, has made it to the White House. It now supplies cocoa to Swiss company Feltrin, the chocolate producing company that makes products for the first family of the United States of, of America, whilst Ghana earns $200, $200 beg your pardon, per ton for its cocoa as a result of proper treatment. The organic cocoa company gets $600 more for its export. We produce above that Ghana quality. You know, what we do is we produce differentiated cocoa beans. You know, we group farmers, we train them, uh, we give them market-oriented agricultural advisory services. That is, we produce what the market wants. This is what we've been doing for Max Fetchling of Switzerland for the past 10 years. And through Max Fetchling of Switzerland, uh, other buyers are getting to know us slowly. You know, and uh, we have heard from us fashioning that the cocoa we produce here is what they use for the production of chocolate for the White House in America. You know, our organic cocoa. Farmers who engage in organic cocoa growing in Suhum get to be paid 35 CDs extra per bag. Established in 2007 as the only organic LBC in the country with concentration in the eastern and Volta regions of Ghana, Yaira Glover Limited got an initial seed money from the Swiss government to the tune of 600,000 euros to start the purely organic cocoa purchasing company in Ghana. With an initial farmer base of less than 500, Yaira Glover gets its cocoa beans from 5,420 farmers. A cocoa farm can be classified as organic if growers cease to apply fertilizer in three years. The cocoa is further tested in Ghana and Switzerland for chemicals before it is certified to be organic. Chief Executive Officer Yaira Glover told the Joy Business team several farmers are in danger using chemicals to spray weeds and artificial fertilizers are dangerous to the health of farmers. Another story is Ghana is still performing poorly when it comes to trading with other countries. That's according to the 2016 World Bank Doing Business and Trading Across Borders report, which ranks the country 154 out of 189 other member states of the World Trade Organization. This is way below other neighbors like Burkina Faso, which ranks 102nd, and Togo, 117. This has prompted a study at, the, at Ghana's port to ascertain the challenges and the way forward. There's more in this business desk report. The study was carried out by USAID on behalf of the National Trade and Facilitation Committee. It is geared towards improving the country's compliance with the World Trade Organization's Trade Facilitation Agreement, which came into effect this February. The study, among others, revealed high port charges as unduly impeding trade with other countries after assessing border management services related to imports, exports, and transit goods. It also revealed the lack of transparency and uncertainty associated with cost of services. It has therefore been recommended for all processes at all entry ports to be standardized. Also highlighted in the recommendations is the need for joint inspections by the relevant ministries, departments and agencies and the need to avoid duplication of roles. The study, however, noted reducing port charges does not necessarily result in lost revenue and that only what it describes as nuisance fees and charges would have to be done away with. Also is the need for port charges to be commensurate with the services to attract facilitate and boost trade. The report ultimately urged Ghana to implement the recommendations if the country's agenda to become the trade gateway of Africa is to be realized by improving its global trade competitiveness. Now, government's plan to increase local food production with its planting for food and jobs program has received a major boost. This is because consumer goods giant Unilever has announced plans to support the program with some investments and also purchase farmers' produce coming out of this program. Visiting Group Chief Executive of Unilever, Paul Pullman, disclosed this to Joy Business after meeting with the Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia at the Flaxland House in Accra. 
But what we expect from governments always is, is when you invest, you want clarity and security. You want inflation to be under control. You want exchange rate stability. You want fiscal and monetary policies that are clear. And this government has that. Uh, for food and jobs, they have a great program in agriculture. They're investing in uh, infrastructure, especially uh, energy, which is obviously needed. They have a great program to industrialize the country. One factory, one district is the slogan to be sure that the added value stays here. So the government has laid out a great plan. But that is very clear, is that the government cannot do that alone. Uh, it, in, it costs money to do this. And uh, obviously, uh, this government has uh, made a clear decision that you need to have close cooperation with the private sector to make that possible. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here as well, and that's why we've always been here. Finally, planning for food and jobs. It looks like you are interested. We are actually in the middle of that. Obviously, we have a big food business ourselves. Uh, we need to use a lot of agricultural materials, uh, many possibilities to do that here in Africa and provide jobs and decent wages and all the other things, financial inclusion, get women into the value chain, all the things that we can do, supplying us with products that we need, but also in a way that the world functions better than what we've done until now. So it's a win-win-win and I think we should all work very hard for that. Now, Deputy Minister of Communications Vincent Soa Odute has revealed that Ghana lost a whopping $50 million to cybercrime in 2016 alone. Speaking with Joy Business at the sidelines of the National Dialogue on Cybersecurity, the minister said his ministry is working with other stakeholders to educate the public and businesses on cybersecurity and its importance to national security. Cyber attacks have become quite rampant in recent years, threatening major systems of organizations and institutions. In 2017 especially, a total of 150 countries experienced two major attacks in the past two months. In early May, Britain's National Health Service, NHS, was among the organizations infected by WannaCry, while a few days ago, many organizations in Europe and the US were crippled by a ransomware attack known as Petia. This throws in the question, how safe is Ghana in the scheme of things? Speaking to Joy Business at the sidelines of the National Dialogue on Cybersecurity, Deputy Minister of Communication Vincent Soa Odote revealed Ghana had lost $50 million in 2016 to cybercrime. He, however, said government is doing all it can to ensure the protection of individuals and businesses. The cabinet is looking at it to, to, to fine-tune it for its implementation. And it, it deals with issues regarding governance, issues regarding enforcement, issues regarding monitoring of the cyberspace to ensure that Ghana becomes a safe cyber country and those who are enjoying a smart life and electronic life do that in a very, in a very smart environment. We, we really don't have any option. We don't have a choice. Technology has become a key factor of production. And then the convergence of ICT, uh, uh, the convergence of ICT has opened up different and has transformed the way we live our lives. So we must be alert and we must appreciate to the threat that is, it poses. ICT enabled products gives huge opportunities. It, it gives opportunity for careers. It makes us very efficient. It makes us very eff effective in the way we do. And it also impacts our social lives. When you talk about social media, but there is a threat to using technology and adopting technology. And this is a key thing that government is looking at. On his part, National Cybersecurity Advisor Alfred Enfibwesiaku said Ghana is nowhere close to being safe from imminent attacks. The ITU statistics which I uh, pointed out it doesn't put us on um, a good footing, if I should use that word. I was a we are below average uh, in terms of our cyber readiness. And that is why those actions are being taken by the Ministry of Communication and for that matter the government. Uh, it's crucial. We need to accept this reality. Uh, cyber attacks are becoming uh, existential threats to our information society. That make us, you know, take certain actions to, to put us as a country in a proactive manner to be able to address the risk. We, we cannot walk away from this dimension of risk. Uh, if you follow statistics globally, if you follow the recent global incident, that means we are at a crossroad, that we, we need to face the reality, meaning we need to implement specific measures. Are there technical measures that we need to implement to protect our networks? 
Do we need to rework on our legislations to make them more responsive to the emerging threats? How well do we have to, you know, package awareness, public campaign programs to be able to address um, emerging issues? These are some of the questions. Who are the stakeholders? Just capacity building, for example, law enforcement, it is important to start tackling each of those elements, uh, no matter how little. The National Dialogue on Cybersecurity is a platform aimed at highlighting and creating a discussion on issues of cybersecurity in Ghana for improved safe internet usage. Now, shareholders of CDH Balanced Fund are expected to see more returns on their investments. This is after the fund recorded a profit of 32.96% in 2016, compared with 30.68% the previous year. Chairman of CDH Balanced Fund, Emmanuel Edusakodie, spoke to Joy Business at the second annual general meeting of CDH. Here at the annual general meeting of CDH Balance Fund, shareholders are expressing optimism in the fund as it recalled it in excess of 2.9 growth as of 2016. The fund managers are proposing for the payment system to be made on a very much technological form. What this means is that all shareholders are not expected to walk all over to the banks to pay their share but rather they could do that through specific mobile money accounts and even other telecom operators as well. Chairman of CDH Holdings explains to us what exactly entered into this very good news for the balance fund and as well the prospects for the fund in the next few years. We research to understand what is happening in the economy. Uh, uh, we, we realize that uh, a lot of the banks which are listed which normally do well would suffer NPLs. Why? Because if you're borrowing money at 30% in this economy, what business are you going to do to earn 30%, pay your workers, pay your salary? We knew they were going to default. Also, um, a lot of the problems in the energy sector had not been resolved. And uh, you add that to the general economic environment, and we knew that the NPLs would be huge as they are coming in thick and fast. So we moved a lot of our investment out of there and stuck with the, with the money market and bought a lot of fixed uh, income uh, instruments. And that's why we ended up the way we ended up. Now, regarding our fund, we look at the exchange and see what's happening there and look at the fixed income. Obviously, fixed income is beginning to drop and uh, we see a few things happening uh, which look very positive on the stock exchange. So we are likely to rebalance our assets and ensure that we get the maximum return for, for our shareholders. Banking uh, by walking into a bank to interact with a brick and mortar building, I think it's dying. It's, it's, it's after a number of years of having banking that way, it's, it's no longer the case. A lot of retail banking is moving to electronic. And so it's necessary that we have a system in place uh, where somebody in Wa or Tumu or Jalu Kope or somewhere in there can easily send money uh, through an electronic system and invest if you have a prior agreement with him. So yes, you can reach him for the first one to get the KYC and all that. But after that, he doesn't have to come again. He just Thanks for staying. Welcome back. Time now to hit the stock market. And we've been joined on the line now by Aseya Kutia, our stock market analyst, to give us uh, how the markets actually ended today. Now, good evening, sir. You're welcome to Business Live. Now, good if you evening. can hear me, how did the market close today? Um, the market ended on a high um, with the, both the composite index and the financial stocks registering upward returns. Um, the composite index currently is at 16.31. That's the year to date return. And the financial stocks also leading slightly at 18.08%. And you had quite an active price uh, list. You had as many as about 10 equities registering up for price gains. Um, with HFC registering the most gain, that's for the week, about 10% price gain, followed by ETI. And we had Goyle doing 3.9%. 
Bob going to 2.1%, and Standard Chartered Bank doing a 1.5% price upward gain. All right, so apart from these uh, equities, as you've mentioned, which other equities stood out? Farm milk, we hear, dominated the four-day trading week. How did it go? Yes, farm milk dominated the trading week. Um, it started very well with some block trades. It traded with a, full a total value of about 4.5 million, more than 50% of the total trades for the week, actually. And that was followed by SGSSB doing about 15%. That's valued at 1.19 million CDs with oil coming in for the petroleum stocks, registering about 919 million, uh, 919,000 CDs, that's in value. That's about 11.8%. They had GCB and Ecobank Ghana following subsequently with 472,000 and 304,000. That's 6% and 3.9% of the market respectively. So Farmoke, yes, um, has maintained the momentum. Last, two, last week also had some good block trades. The previous week also with some very good block trades and also falling suit with this week. So it actually has added a lot of light to this four-day trading week. Uh, we're expecting to be relatively slow, but um, nonetheless, Farmog added some spark to it, registering some high volumes of values. All right, so we're I must also say that uh, hmm. compared to the previous week, that's comparing yeah. this trading week to the previous week, um, total volume and value dipped slightly low. That's a... Uh, um, that's total volume of about 2.3 million and a value of about 4.8 million. Okay, now we're going into yet another four-day week uh, next week because Monday is a holiday. Now, which stocks or which equities should investors be eyeing? Okay, for, for next week, um, looking at our bid and offer spread, that's how the market ended. So looking at how shareholders were demanding stocks and didn't get to buy as against those who were trying to offer. Um, well, gold ended the market strongly. Um, it actually closed at 1.87 CDs per share, but it had investors also posting 1.88 CDs uh, per share and uh, trying to buy some stocks, but still didn't even get. So it ended on a very good note as regards to demand. So I would expect that we keep our eyes on Goyle. Um, uh, Standard Chartered Bank, also as usual, had the momentum. During the earlier hours in trading, it took a bit of a dip. But the volumes came through, and we ended with outstanding bids as well. That market currently is 17.04 CDs per share, but it had as much as 17.11 CDs per share being bidded for. But still, there was no supply. So I expect that Standard Chartered Bank would, would continue with its upward price run. Total, that is a very closely traded stock. That ended the market with 2.22 CDs per share. Also ended with outstanding bids. So I expect Total also to be watched closely. We deliver as well at 8.85 CDs. A lot of bids, no offers, no stocks at all to be bought. So I expect Unilever Ghana Limited also to, to perform quite well. Uh, that's, that's next week. All right. Now let's shift attention to the currency market now, where we hear the CD has been losing uh, grounds to three major trading currencies. Now, yes. how did it perform? How did it close uh, today? Okay, it closed that, that for the CD against the dollar, closed at an average rate of 4.36 CDs, that's the dollar. That is um, a slight dip of 0.2% or 20 basis points compared to the last trading week. Um, the euro, CD also dipped, that's by 2.1%. Uh, that's closing at an average rate of 4 CDs, uh, 97 pesos per euro. And with the pound, it also dipped by 2.2%. That's compared to the previous week, and it's trading averagely at 5.665 CDs per pound. Um, considering what we've seen this week, um, next week, the CD, I, I believe the CD will be a bit stable, but it okay. might still shed off some little pesos here and there. Um, the inflows from, from the, you know, news came from Cocoa Bot um, trying to get the syndicated loan coming through. I believe that that should add a lot of light to, to you know, uh, what investors especially speculators, those who are the more of the currency traders are looking at as well. And also, you're securing a $116 million facility from, from IMF. If, if, if that, that comes through that next month, of course, starting next week, if that comes through as well, it will add some dollars into the system. So I expect that a CD should gain some ground towards the end of next week to the second week in July. All right, finally, the commodity market, is gold, gold prices picking up now? No, gold currently still trading at a low, dipping by um, $3.30, and it's currently trading at 
two hundred and forty two dollars fifty cents. Uh, that's per ounce. Um, gold is still suffering from from the excess supply pressure. Uh, demand for gold has slowed down. Once Asia, which is the biggest right. user of gold or demand for for demand market for gold, slows down, you expect that to uh, to hit the commodity, and it has hit the commodity indeed. And so gold has suffered a bit of a setback, still trading at the low. Um, other commodities also that could be of concern to us, as crude oil and cocoa. Um, however, have been a bit of a ground crude oil is currently trading at forty-seven dollars ninety-seven cents. That's per barrel. It's All gained right. one dollar sixteen cents. And um, cocoa is currently trading at about one thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars plus per metric ton. That's gained about sixty-six dollars. So that's some good news for us, country. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I see Akutia is a stockman analyst. He's been assessing how the performance of the stock market looked like before it closed today. Now, in an interview of the day tonight, private sector businesses that use huge electricity consumption for their operations are now expected to have some relief. This is because the high electricity charges for their operations will be taken care of by the installation of solar systems on a flexible basis by Ecology Limited, a renewable energy investment firm. The initiative is aimed at helping the country to reduce its over-reliance on thermal and hydro sources of power. Rasmussen Rasmus Hansen is sales manager of Ecology Limited. Interview of the day. Right, a full solution that really addresses all concerns of companies here. So not only do we want them to have a better carbon footprint, but we also want them to save money compared to their electricity bill from ECG, and we also want it to finance everything for them so they don't have to invest the money themselves. So we call that solar as a service, where we take care of everything. We work with local partners to construct the solar systems for the companies, and we fundraise all the money on our dedicated crowdfunding platform, and we maintain everything for the entire duration of the solar system. So it's just making solar for companies very, very easy. It should address all of the concerns that they would have had in the past, especially the concern of investing their own money into something that's not their core business. That is what we're trying to do. Um, so how much investment are we looking at from your angle, since you'll be doing most of the things for them? Yes, absolutely. That's a great question. So what we can do is actually we can do smaller systems where we can invest uh, down to 50,000 euros, and we can even do larger systems where we can fundraise for up to 2.5 million euros. Is it for only private sector companies? Yes. This uh, is entirely for commercial and industrial clients. So what we are hoping to do also with that naturally is the more electricity we uh, take away and contribute to the Ghanaian economy also means that there is more electricity available for others so we don't end up in a situation with doomsday again. So just by providing electricity to the companies actually means that hopefully there will also be more electricity available for everyone else. And what's the payment plans at the end of the day? Yes, so what we can actually offer is that we can give people a contract from anywhere between three years and up to 20 years. So if you go to a commercial bank here, typically uh, for a solar loan, you can only get one to two years and the interest rates are very high. So we can offer a much longer period of time and we can almost guarantee that we are always up to 40% cheaper than the ECG rate. Uh, on the portion of electricity that we substitute. So for example, if we develop a solar uh, power system uh, for a company and it substitutes 30% of that electricity bill, then on that portion of electricity, they can save up to 40%. Interview of the day. And that will be it for Business Live tonight. Thank you so much for your company. Thank you for being with the team throughout the week. And of course, I stood in for Daryl Quell tonight. He'll be joining us next Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. My name is Imano Apuachi.